Hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. I'm Moose, and today... Oh, wait a second. There we go. Alright guys, I'm Moose, and this is Moose's Gear Goo Review, and today we have a challenge. We have a video challenge, and this video challenge comes from my friend Patty from Patty's Potato Peelers. He came up with a challenge called the 10 minute mission challenge or open tag it's an open tag and basically he came up with a scenario um, where you're part of a search and rescue team and you get called up to go to a remote island off the coast of wherever you live and you're, you got 10 minutes you got the call you got 10 minutes to pick five um, different cutting tools or tools that you will bring with you on this trip to uh, go out and do a search and rescue and help people get to safety. He said you'll get a backpack, they'll provide you with food and shelter and clothing, and all he wants you to do is focus on the cutting tools or tools that you would bring with for the search and rescue. Uh, so uh, I will leave a link in the description below to Patty's original um, challenge video the 10 minute mission video and then i will tell you what my knives are so to set up the scenario since i live in minnesota um well patty originally when he made the the scenario he lives in ireland so there's a lot of coastline to ireland and uh you know things pertain differently to where you are in the world and since i live in minnesota uh, it's kind of landlocked. We have a lot of lakes and I was trying to think of a location closest to me where there would be a large island where there would be people. And so I decided to set my scenario uh, for the island of Isle Royale. You can look it up. It is a large island that uh, is backpacking only. You can go camping. It's a national park. Uh, and I actually backpacked across it when I was in Scouts. Um, but it's like 100 miles long or 80 some miles long and there's wolves and moose on there, pine, deciduous forests, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I decided to take was based on the forest and stuff. So it's similar to northern Minnesota. That being said, I'll get into the cutting tools and we can get on with this challenge. So challenge, challenge accepted, Patty, and this is what I was able to grab in 10 minutes. All right, so the first knife is gonna probably be my most, uh, my primary knife, and that is the Condor Pterosaur. This is the Condor Pterosaur. It is a full tang fixed blade. The tang goes all the way through to the butt. Uh, it has a polymer handle and a polymer sheath. Uh, this knife is ambidextrous, um, but I would be carrying it on my right hand side. Um, and this would be on my belt at all times. Uh, I picked this knife specifically because it is a scandy grind and when you're up in the northern woods uh, nothing cuts through uh, wood as well as a scandy grind. So this is a, a, an excellent bushcraft knife. It's 1095 high carbon steel um, and uh, a scandy grind just cuts super awesome. Has a sharpened 90 degree spine and uh, yeah, I've used this a lot. I like the blade shape. Uh, I like the size, it's very nimble. It's great for bushcraft. So if we were backpacking in, so let's say there was a blowdown on the island and that's the reason why there's this emergency, um, you know, you'll be basically climbing around a bunch of trees and stuff. And if you have to make camp out there, uh, having a scandy grind and knowing some bushcraft skills for starting a fire and making tent pegs or creating a uh, tripod to hang a cooking pot or stuff like that you know a scanty grind knife would definitely come in handy so uh, this does come in a couple colors um, so if I did have to choose again um, it comes in like a green this earth coyote tan and then a black and then they have an, uh, like a bright orange I'd probably go for an orange one if I was going search and rescue but that is the first knife since we'll be in some heavy woods I uh, also thought about bringing my um, kind of mid-size axe, but I thought it'd be kind of heavy and kind of bulky because I like to travel light in general. Uh, that being said, I chose more of a chopper and something that could really process wood really well. And so my next knife 
that I chose is the MSK1 Primitive. So this is the MSK1 Primitive. It is a beast of a knife. It is a saber ground, plain edge blade with kind of a clip point. It's very thick, very heavy. It's full tang. It has a striking pommel. And one of the main features, it has a bow drill divot right there. And uh, yeah, so this is a survival knife. I can bite up on it and do some finer work. But the main reason why I'm bringing this big <laughs> chopper with the uh, add-on Kydex sheath uh, is to chop. Um, it has a three grip handle and this will allow me to take some big swings and chop through things. Um, no, it's not as good as a full-size axe or even a mid-size axe, but uh, it does chop really well for the size and the weight. Uh, it also is really good at uh, batoning. It splits, uh, it splits the smaller diameter logs really well. And if we are out there, we're not going to be building like a giant bonfire. Uh, you know, any sort of a log that's two to three inch in diameter is all you really need for a, a small campfire. So, um, yeah. But this will be my main chopper. And it also would be great in a survival situation. So, if I get separated and only have this, I will survive. Oh, yeah. And the blade steel on this is 1075. So, it can really take a beating. So that is the MSK-1 Primitive. The next cutting tool I chose is based on, besides chopping and cutting with a scanning ground knife, uh, I wanted to bring something that I could saw, and that is the Baco Laplander is my third choice. I decided to bring a nice um, handsaw, folds up relatively small, it uh, has a push button lock, it locks open, and then it has a really nice, uh, really effective um, seven and a half inch saw blade. Uh, it, this also uh, cuts when you push or pull, and it does a really good job. Um, you know, the, some people are brand loyal and whatnot. Uh, I've had this saw personally for about eight years and I've just never felt or needed a reason, or I don't have a reason to upgrade. It just suits my needs and it meets my needs very well. I like the rubberized grip, very comfortable, and I like the compact size. And so this will help with uh, getting over downed logs, um, creating you know different sized um, rods or poles if I'm setting up a tarp. You know, it just makes things a little neater and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So, bring in a handsaw, Baco Laplander. My fourth, my fourth item, uh, cutting tool. Um, I decided to bring a multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Sidekick. I chose a multi-tool because uh, when you're in rescue situations, scenarios, you never know what you're going to come across. And just having a bunch of cutting tools alone isn't necessarily going to fix everything. Um, so I brought the Leatherman Sidekick because it's always good to have a nice set of pliers. This is spring-loaded, so I could use it with one hand pretty well. Um, there is a knife blade on there. There are wire cutters, a bunch of other tools, flathead screwdrivers. We have... You know the knife blade it locks open it's not terribly big but then too we have a small saw this will be good for any sort of finer sawing or detailed things if I had to make a trap if we we're gonna trap anything uh, or triggers um, and that locks open as well plus the saw back works really good for striking a ferrule rod so that's also very helpful um, I know this isn't the most expensive and if not this might be the cheapest uh, Leatherman out there um, But it works and there's a lot of good tools on it, but two since this is kind of old I've had it for a while. Um, I'm probably gonna look into buying an upgraded uh, Multi-tool sometime this year. So there's a little sneak peek of what I'm thinking 
So, just to recap, I have the Condor Pterosaur, the MSK-1 Survival Knife, the Bacolop Lander, and the Sidekick. And then I also decided to bring a uh, pocket knife. And this will fit in my pocket. I chose this knife specifically for its uh, field strip technology, and that is the CRKT HVAS. Jesper's Vox, Voxnay's design. This is a really cool, um, practical design. It's very comfortable. Um, it's a hollow grind, plain edge blade. It's in like uh, 141 or something, 116 blade steel. Um, but it holds up pretty well. I like it. Uh, easy to sharpen. Stainless steel. But the, a few things that I really like about this knife and why I chose this knife. One, it has a decently sized broad blade uh, with a little bit of belly. It's good for food prep and basic camp tasks. Uh, it also has a 90 degree spine on it so you can throw sparks. It has a thumb hole opening, uh, which just makes it nice and easy. You can open it with gloves if you need to. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's no little thumb studs to go missing or anything. It is a liner lock. Um, it has decent texture. It has a really nice uh, pocket clip with recessed screws. So, really like that. So it'll sit pretty deep in the pocket. It's very smooth. Uh, but the other main reason was if we are to do any food prep and you know skinning of small game or anything like that, uh, this does has the field strip technology. So you undo this lever here. You spin this wheel back here and the scales come apart. So it'll be really easy to clean and maintain uh, and keep it clean. So yeah, that is the HVAS. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Hopefully that explanation works for you guys. It's what I would take. And once again, you only had 10 minutes to find this. So if you are going to do the open tag, uh, please message Patty at the original video. Uh, just so he knows that you're out there trying his tag. He, he really appreciates that. And two, make sure you set a timer and see what you actually need to do to find the 10 items. I actually had to run in my garage and, and search around to try to find my pocket saw. So I was worried I wasn't going to get it in time and then I'd have to pick something else. So um, other than that, guys, this is really fun. Hopefully you like that. Please give me feedback on what you guys think and what you guys think of the video. Other than that, uh, like, comment, share and uh hit that notification bell and oh yeah and subscribe <laughs> other than that guys thank you so much peace and i'll see you outside bye